It's a beautiful sight, isn't it? Looking at all this reminds you of just how good it is to see. Yes, these eyes of ours are marvelous instruments. They let us enjoy our world and help us to live in it successfully. Unfortunately, our eyes are not always as perfect as we'd like them to be. Take this young skier, for instance. He sees objects well at a distance. But when the boy looks at objects that are close to him, this is how he sees. That's because he has hyperopia, a condition we know as farsightedness. Put your glasses on, son. By using the proper spectacles, our young friend's vision is corrected to normal. His father has recently started to wear spectacles also. His glasses have special lenses called bifocals. As we grow older, our eyes lose some of their ability to accommodate, a condition known as presbyopia. Bifocals make it possible for this man to read his map without difficulty. If he were not wearing his spectacles, the printing on the map would appear blurred. But thanks okay, to his Kurt. bifocal lenses, see this that? man can see objects that would be difficult without this special okay. help. Okay. <laughs> Here's another person wearing spectacles to improve her vision. She has astigmatism, the most common eye disorder. Because of an irregularity in the shape of the cornea of her eye, her focusing ability is distorted. Since she is wearing glasses, the young lady sees the scene before her as it appears to us who have normal vision. But if she were not wearing glasses, the scene might look like this. Good eyesight is important to all of us. However, some of us need the help of spectacles in order to see well. Here's a soldier enjoying a holiday. Notice that he's reading a sign without any trouble. That's because it's close to him. Hey, Gary! But when he turns to look for his friend, this is what he sees. While he can see objects that are close, his distant vision is blurred. In order to be recognized, his friend must move closer. Obviously, there's something wrong with his vision. If he's going to see clearly at all times, this soldier is going to need some help. First, he's made an appointment to visit the hospital optometry clinic. Number one. Clear one. Clear two. Number In order one. to determine the nature of Clear the problem, one. the doctor will conduct Clear a two. thorough examination. Okay, what about... Uh... With the help of special equipment, the doctor studies his eyes and examines his vision. When he finishes this examination, the problem is diagnosed. Okay. However, the most common one is that the eye is usually a little bit too large. Instead of the light he has myopia, a condition commonly called nearsightedness. There are several things that cause myopia. By wearing spectacles with the proper lenses, his vision can be corrected. The doctor fills in a DD form 771. The spectacle prescription for glasses 
which must be made to fill the requirements of this patient. The prescription form is mailed to the Optical Fabrication Laboratory at Fitzsimmons Army Medical Center in Denver, Colorado. The laboratory is the Army's largest and most complete optical lab. Every day, the laboratory receives prescriptions from military ophthalmology and optometry clinics throughout the world. Our prescription is only one of many received. Here in the editing office, the soldier's prescription is checked to make certain that it contains all the necessary information and authorization. Then it is sent to the proper laboratory section, either surface or fabrication. The first stop for our prescription is layout in the surface section. A technician draws up a worksheet, then selects a semi-finished lens blank from a rotating stock bin. He determines the type of curves that must be ground on the lens in order to provide the help the eyes need. Once the lens blanks are marked, they are placed in a tray with the worksheet. This tray will carry the lenses through the entire process. First, the tray goes to the spray booth, where the lenses receive a blue protective coating. This decreases the chance of damage and makes it possible for a metal block to adhere to the lens. After spraying, a metal block is attached to the lens by using a low melting point alloy. The purpose of this block is to hold the lens securely during the many surfacing procedures. This machine is a cribber. It's used to remove excess glass from the lens. The tray is delivered here for generating new curves on the inside surface of the lens. The technician takes information from the worksheet and dials in the correct setting for the curves. A diamond wheel will cut the glass with great precision. During this operation, several millimeters of glass are removed from the lens. The lenses go next to the lap section. A metal lap is selected for use on the cylinder or sphere machines. The lap must correspond to the curve of the lens. Once the lap is selected, the lenses are ready for fining and polishing. Using an emery substance, the lens surface is fined for approximately four minutes using either the cylinder machine or the sphere machine. When the fining process is finished, the lenses are polished. For polishing, cerium oxide, a rare earth substance, is used. The lens is polished on the same type of machine for approximately five minutes, then cleaned and inspected. With the polishing complete, the metal block can be removed. A modified commercial dishwasher performs this function. In the deblocking process, the metal alloy used for attaching the block is reclaimed and recycled for further use. The metal block will also be reused. And here are the surfaced lenses. 
It has taken the skills and efforts of 10 optical laboratory specialists and the use of highly specialized equipment to make these lenses. Now they are ready to go to the lab's fabrication section where the job of filling the prescription will be completed. In the fabrication markup, it is necessary for the technician to spot the optical center and correct axis so the lenses can be positioned for proper cutting and edging. Once this is accomplished, the lens are marked with a cutting line. Now the lens is blocked with an alloy block and the lens is ready for edging. The edger removes excess glass, shapes and sizes the lens, and places a V-bevel on the edge of the lens so it can be inserted into a frame. The final edging is done by hand to remove any imperfections such as flakes and stars. This promotes the safety of the lenses. In this part of the laboratory, the safety of the lenses is ensured. Here, the lenses are case hardened, that is, treated to make them impact resistant. There are two methods for case hardening lenses. They can be treated by a chemical process using this equipment. 400 pair of lenses can be treated at one time, and the process takes 15 hours. The second method involves the use of heat. In this unit, the lenses are subjected to extremely high temperature ranging between 1200 and 1300 degrees. Then the lenses are quickly cooled by a stream of cold air. In order to check the lens to make certain that it is sufficiently hardened, the case hardened lens is placed in this tester. A metal ball is dropped on it. The lens doesn't break, assuring it is impact resistant. The case hardened lenses are ready for framing. Here the appropriate frame is selected. Putting the lens into the frame is an intricate and important job. It requires the efforts of another specialist. Notice how the technician uses the two heated bead baths to manipulate the frames. These baths are maintained at two different temperatures. Combined with the technician's skill, they play an important part in the insertion of the lenses into the frames. And here they are. After all this work, we have a pair of spectacles. But before they can be sent out to the patient, there is one more step. The glasses will be carefully inspected to make certain that they are perfect and that the prescription has been filled correctly.
now they're ready to go. They'll be shipped back to the clinic today, along with the more than 1,500 pairs of spectacles which were produced in one day's work of the Optical Fabrication Laboratory. How's that feel? Our patient has returned to the clinic where his glasses are fitted to yeah, assure their that. comfort and That's correct great. fit. With his new glasses, the soldier discovers that his vision is improved, thanks to the work of many people who made these glasses to answer his particular needs. We've seen trained opticians making spectacles, but what about the training to achieve these skills? This morning class, we're going to learn how to convert a prescription to a power reading. This is done if you're giving a RX Today, a new plus group of students are receiving classroom instruction, one, the first phase of training. Sergeant Olson, I would take the plus one from the prescription, set it under the power wheel reading for single line clear. To the macular section of the eyeball. The first medium that it hits will be the tear layer which bathes the cornea. From this training there, program is the optical specialist course offered by the Academy of Health Sciences at Fitzsimmons Army Medical Center in Denver. Students can receive college credit for this course through Regis College here in Denver. After the student opticians receive an information foundation in the classroom, they move into the special training lab for practical exercises and experience on equipment. With the help of instructors, the students become familiar with the operation of each piece of laboratory equipment used in the fabrication of spectacles. Students gain experience and expertise in each step of the process, from surfacing through fabrication and such special projects as dispensing, repair, and filling special glass and plastic prescriptions. The third phase of training takes place here in the Optical Fabrication Laboratory, where students receive on-the-job instruction and intensive training. Under the guidance of an instructor, the students work side-by-side -side with expert technicians to perfect their skill in each phase of laboratory production. At the end of this training period, the trainees will be ready to take their places on the team of skilled experts whose efforts are combined for soldiers to see.